Hey guys, I saw this post and I thought it was interesting. It says my wife and I left graduate school 23 years ago with a combined total of $70,000 in debt. Since then, we've made $500 monthly payments for 23 years. And they say here 120,000 plus. And it's quite a bit more than that. This would end up being $138,000. Today, we still owe $60,000. There's two things I'm interested in. What is the annual interest rate that would cause this? And how long is it going to take them to pay the whole thing off? So first, let's look at the compounded interest growth formula. It says the future value is equal to the present value times one plus the monthly interest rate to the power of the number of months. If we were to use this formula, the present value would be the 70,000 that it started with, and the future would be the 60,000 that it is today. But this only works if there's no monthly payments. Since there are monthly payments being made, we're interested in an annuity. And for an annuity, the future value of those payments is equal to the payment size times all of this stuff. And this ends up giving us the future value of the payments. It's a little less intuitive than this one, but it's not too difficult to use it. So now the $60,000 that they still owe today, how can we express this using these formulas? What well, ends up being the future value of the loan with no payments minus the future value of their payments. So this first part is the loan growing, growing, growing. And the second part is them paying it down. And that's how we get the $60,000. And these are literally these formulas. So we'll bring down the 60,000 for the future value of loan, no payments, we'll use this formula. And then we're gonna subtract the future value of payments, which is this formula. And then next we can plug in all our values. So the present value is equal to 70,000. We're treating that like the initial value. We currently don't know the R, so we're gonna leave it as R. N is the number of months, so it's going to be 23 years times 12, and that ends up being 276. P is equal to the payment size, that's $500, and then we're going to copy down everything else, and in the place of the N, we'll plug in another 276. Since this is so complicated, let's set everything equal to zero. Let's subtract 60,000 from both sides, and we end up with zero is equal to all of this stuff. I'm not able to solve this by hand, so let's use some technology. Let's try Wolfram Alpha. Sometimes it can do things and it gives us 0 0.00697. So now we have our monthly interest rate. But how do we find the effective annual interest rate? It ends up using this formula right here. One plus the effective annual interest rate is equal to one plus the monthly rate to the power of 12. So ultimately this is taking the 12 compoundings per year and just seeing what it effectively becomes. To solve for the R annual, we can plug in this number for the R monthly. And then one plus this to the 12th power is approximately equal to 1.0869381. After we subtract one from both sides, we get our annual interest rate of 0.0869381. And the way you'd usually see this expressed would look like this. It'd be 8.69%. Nice. But I typically prefer to think of it like this because this is an actual number we can plug into formulas. And let's express each of these with three significant figures. And now we have the answer to our first question. Let's put a box around it. Next, let's find out how long it's going to take them to pay it off. We're going to use the same formula again. And here it is with everything plugged in. This is balanced on both sides of the equation. The only issue is that we only have three significant figures. So it ends up being 59,929.67. But if we didn't round the rate, this would be exactly 60,000. You know what? I'm thinking about this a little bit. The 8.69%, that is not as terrible as I thought it was going to be. So the issue isn't only the percent. It really is the size of the monthly payments. $500 just is not big enough. So let's say they made $600 monthly payments instead of $500 monthly payments. How much do we think they would owe right now? After we plug all this into a calculator, we get approximately negative 23,000. So that means they don't owe any more money. It was paid off a couple years ago. They would actually have $23,000 in the bank. So I wonder how long ago it was paid off. We can take the future value, set it equal to zero, and then we can change our 276 months, make that N. So now we're gonna find out how long it will take this $600 per month to get the balance down to zero. And we get about 241.5. So we'll round up to 242 months, or in other words, 20 years and two months. If they would have made $600 monthly payments instead of $500 monthly payments, the whole thing would have been paid off about three years ago. That's unfortunate. Let's put the whole thing in a table and let's look at these other possible monthly payments. To get $700 a month, we'll change the 600 into a 700. So if their payments would have been $700 a month, they would have paid the whole thing off in 14 years and four months. If they had done $800 a month, the whole thing would be paid off in 11 years and four months. And $900 a month would have paid the whole thing off in nine years and five months. So now the big question, at $500 a month, how long is it gonna take them to pay the whole thing off? 
it ends up being 44 years and eight months. So they got almost 22 more years to go. They're just a little bit more than halfway done. And now we've answered our second question. So this is a very realistic situation if you have an 8.69% annual interest rate and you make $500 a month payments. And this loan is gonna end up taking 44 years and eight months to pay off. How exciting. 